channel. Uh, today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do a Q&A. Um, please excuse how I look. I'm currently moving house, well, hopefully before Christmas, moving house. And I am really busy with cake work at the minute. So, and I wanted to sit down and do a Q&A, but I also haven't had time to sit down, do my hair and makeup to film it. So I am halfway through baking which is why I look like this, but I thought let's not, let's just crack on. One of the most important questions I get asked all the time is how to get started. Do you need to register? Do you need insurance? Do you need to pay tax? Yada, yada, yada. The basics is if you are just baking as a hobby, not taking any money, um, you literally just maybe your family give you money for ingredients, no, you don't have to register. If you want to do it to make a profit, if you're selling to the public, selling to someone you don't know, selling online, you do need to register. And registering means you go to your local council's website. So for me, that is stockport.gov.uk and whatever it is. Um, and on there, it'll say about registering a food business. You fill out the forms. It does say you can start trading within 28 days. If you were selling meats or anything that can, you know, poison people or make people very ill they tend to come out and speak to you within that 28 days also with natasha's law now in place which is to do with food allergens it's really good to know and have that information one thing i do get asked a lot is what about tax so obviously as a business as a i'm a sole trader i pay tax like most people pay tax so I'll be honest, I have an accountant because I don't really get it. I do get it in a sense of if you earn so much money, you have to pay tax on that. Um, but because it's, it is quite difficult and I'm a sole trader and I turn over um, an all right profit, I have an accountant to do that for me. Normally, the um, to register a business for tax purposes, so Sugar Sparrow as a whole to be registered under the HMRC, uh, you have to do that when you take a thousand pounds worth of orders. You have to then declare it. So if you've not taken a thousand pounds, which is a lot of cake, don't worry yourself. Uh, once you start getting to a thousand pounds, start looking on the HMRC about being um, a sole trader. That goes for any business. If you're a crafting business, plumber, electrician, once you hit a thousand pounds, you have to start uh, declaring that. Next thing I get asked about all the time is why did I or how did I go from corporate life to being a full-time baker? A uh, bit of a long story. I um, was pushed. Uh, it wasn't out of choice. I, I am quite honest about this. Um, it wasn't my first option uh i used to make cakes years ago on and off i was always registered from my home address just because i dabbled in and out of baking for the last 10 years i really enjoyed my corporate job i'd had two children i'd just gone back to work a few months in i was working full time and i was up for a redundancy that being said uh i was trying to keep my job um i went down every avenue i could to keep my job in the corporate world because i did like it um and i miss it sometimes but one day i had an absolute wobble and i said why am i doing this why well, i can just take the money i can take the money and walk away uh, and my husband was like yeah go for it uh i said i'll just rely on cakes i'll go back to doing cakes it's what i know i already have a lot of equipment i already know like the ins and outs of like registering all that so i did have a bit of an upper hand um and i was very fortunate in the fact that i had a lump sum of cash given to me uh as my redundancy pay i used that money to kind of pay myself a wage for the first few months when i didn't have a lot of work on i also used that money to buy like a second fridge a, um a new mixer uh some new equipment um it i wasn't it wasn't a fact of i was baking alongside work and I took the plunge to quit my job, um, I, I was pushed. <laughs> uh, that's as honest as I can be about it. Um, if I hadn't been up for redundancy, I, would, I wouldn't have even touched cake for the like, last couple of years. Um, it's just how I felt at the time. I, I'd, I'd fallen out of love with baking. It's just something I knew I could do. Uh, very fortunate for me, I have turned it into a full business. Um, but I just think it's because I like to work. I like to push myself. I'm very committed. 
So, and I think you, if you're going to do something, you need that drive. You do need that drive. Otherwise, if you do it half assed you you won't turn a profit. Um, so on my TikTok now and then, I do show that I do have kids. And also on my Instagram, you can see I have kids. People ask me, how do I balance a young family and a busy baking career? And I'll be honest, it's difficult. In the pandemic, I was so busy because I was still allowed to trade. It was very difficult. Uh, I relied heavily on my husband, heavily on my mum, um, my mother-in-law when we could see her. Um, it, it was a breaking point. It was either do I keep going or do I stop it all and focus on the kids? Um, luckily for me, I, with all the support I had, I just kept going. I work a lot of nights. Um, when I have those really busy weeks, I work when they're in nursery or when they're in school. And then I go home, do bath time, bedtime, and then I go back to work for another eight hours. It's not easy. Like I said, in business, you do have to be driven. Um, so in the pandemic, I was working till three, four in the morning most nights and then getting up at seven to get a few hours in before the kids woke up. It was hard. It was really hard. It's getting easier now. Now I've got a steady like, income of so many cakes a week with a steady amount of work. Um, and the fact I only do cakes and cupcakes and I'm not offering everything under the sun, that has made life a little bit easier. I've got more of a routine. Uh, for instance, I don't do markets. Um, I tried that. I used to do treat boxes, which I do now and then, but I only if I'm quiet. So I wouldn't recommend it. I started out when the kids were literally one and two. Um, a big chunk of my time was baking, like up to 80 hours a week. I really wouldn't recommend it if you have got children, haven't got a really good support network. I fell out with my mum and husband about baking so much a lot of the time. But looking back on it now, we're all thankful I kept pushing. <laughs> but um, at the time, it, it was a real struggle. So for anyone who is a newer follower, I maybe didn't see this being built. I get asked all the time about where is this kitchen? Where, like, is this my house? What is going on? This is a, excuse the mess because I am midway through work. This, as you can see, I've got cake right there. This is a purpose built home bakery. Um, I live in a two up, two down with two kids and a husband who works from home. It isn't, it isn't a great setup. Uh, we really struggled when I worked from our house uh, and I was obviously getting a lot of orders, couldn't keep up on top of it because I didn't have enough space. So my mum and dad kindly offered for me to either knock down or convert their garage, which was great until the council were like, can't do that. Well, we could do it, but they, for the building that needed to kind of be moved in that place, they wanted to close the road and that was going to cost a load of money. It was just a load of hassle. So one day, me and my mum were just chatting and this cellar, it was just a utility room. It was, you know, it wasn't a nice cellar. It wasn't nicely done like this. It was just like a shitty utility room. So my mum said, uh, well, cellar, it's a good size. Uh, stairs lead direct, directly from the kitchen above. It's got water electric. There is a bathroom down here. Um, and I was like, mm, okay. So we got the builders around and said, right, instead of the garage, what about the cellar? They checked it and they were like, yeah, this would be a lot easier. <laughs> um, I don't know if I would have had more square footage in where the garage plot was, but that would have taken a lot more work and a lot more money at the end of the day than this. So this was definitely a better option. Um, it was back to brick, took the ceiling down. That was just, you could see the floorboards above or the wiring was done, or the plumbing was done, new floor, um, full kitchen, which I don't know if you can see, but this workbench is like double, double depth, which is fantastic because often on that side, it's like a breakfast bar. So we had like a plug socket, so I can do like work on my laptop and then do cakes this side. Got dishwasher, got two sinks. Um, everything you kind of need. I have four fridges down here. I have two ovens, a chest freezer, I mean, what more could you ask for? Oh, the only problem is, I'm five foot one. I can touch the ceiling. If anyone tall comes down here, they do struggle, but 
no one comes in here. I literally make cakes and meet people at the front door. I have a separate doorbell that rings for down here. Um, it is, it's amazing. I'm very fortunate that my parents said, you can have our cellar. Um, I only live around the corner from them as well. And my new house we're moving into is literally 300 yards away. So I don't have to travel. I just walk over. Um, I love it. It was all in all, it cost about £10,000. That was for all the work, electric, plumbing, new appliances, kitchen itself. Um, it was definitely a big investment and it was a Oh, do I do it? Do I not? £10,000 is a lot of money. But it for the work-life balance of I leave my house and come here for work, 100% worth it. Um, the fact that people are like, did you not want a shop? Uh, having young children and a shop for me wasn't feasible. To be open on a weekend, be open at the end of the week, which when they're not in nursery, because I like to have my Fridays off. Um, it it wasn't it just wasn't feasible for how I wanted a work life balance. I didn't want to have to be in a shop all the time. In fact, I work late at night. I didn't want to be in a shop late at night. Um, and then be tired the next day if I wanted to have a light in and not open. I don't like being set to times. I guess. Um, whereas here, do what I want. <laughs> it's my mum and dad's house. I've got a key. Um. For those who know as well, Nikita, my best friend who works for me, she does all like the admin, toppers, etc. She has an office upstairs in one of the bedrooms. Um, so it, it is, that's weird because I have to go up two flights of stairs to go get her to do anything. But um, it works and I think for now and for a good while, this is all I will need. So that's the story of why I'm in a cellar. I do have a window. It's dark right now because it's England and it's like four o'clock. But um, in the summer, that lets in a lot of light considering we're like kind of underground. Um, but yeah, I hope you like it. I like it. I've got pink tiles, a bloody, and a gold tap. Fucking love it. So this is a fun one. I often get asked, mostly about people when I meet them out and about, did I make my own wedding cake? Simple fact, I just didn't have a wedding cake. Um, I'm not really a fan of cake. I'm, I'm not a cake eater. I wouldn't go on my way to eat cake. Um, chocolate, on the other hand, I do, but not an actual cake. My wedding, at the time, I had two babies under 18 months. Um, I was on mat leave, but I wasn't doing cakes, really. I also didn't want the pressure of two days before my wedding making a cake and then having to deliver it and set it up on the day not about that uh, i want to relax and enjoy myself so we had a donut wall uh and it went down an absolute treat um yeah i, I wouldn't actually recommend to anyone making their own wedding cake because when i do wedding cakes for other people it's stressful enough um making something perfect for someone's perfect day also working with venues, setting up on their time scale, you are very restricted to what you can and can't do, which is why I tend to not make wedding cakes. I make smaller occasion cakes for weddings, but not big, massive wedding cakes. Uh, I didn't like doing it when I worked in a bakery years ago, so I, I try to avoid them when I can. Um, that's just me being honest. It's just, it's just stressful. I, I just wouldn't want to let someone down if they didn't like their cake on their wedding day. Um, Maybe I'm just being pathetic, but that's how I feel. So one question I get asked time and time again is how to grow social media and also how to get your name out there to get the orders in. This is such a big topic and I want to go really in depth with it. I'm going to do another video later this week just about that. So please like, subscribe and watch out for that. Um, I will go in as much detail as I can. Just gonna like to share everything that I've learned. I'm no expert, but I am happy to help. So keep your eye out for that one. Popular question, what colors do I use and where do I get them? So I have this lovely little rack over here, which is full of my colors. I'll bring you over with me. Here you go. I get asked all the time, what is that rack on? It's a nail polish acrylic rack from eBay. I can put the link below. But I use a lot of colour splash. I very much enjoy it. Some sugar flare, mostly colour mill. The reasons I use those colours is just what I found works best with the ingredients I use. Everyone will be different because everyone uses slightly different ingredients. Uh, different butters, for instance, will react differently to 
different colours. Uh, colour mill is an oil base, so if you're doing anything with chocolate, colour mill is the best. It is dearer, but honest to God, I just think whatever it's made of, uh, even for buttercream, it's just stunning. It makes your buttercream so silky and just gorgeous. I just love it. Um, but I fill up my collection of colours over time. They don't tend to go out of date or the dates on colours are very long very very long like years long so i have built up over time and different colors and then obviously ones that i use a lot i just buy more regularly um color splash because i do like to see colors up close um i like to just go hobby craft because you can see them there and then and they also do like the wilt wilton i don't really like they have a lot of allergens in but sugar flare is good sometimes it can go grainy how do I get lots of photos, especially when you're starting out, of different cakes, different designs for your portfolio, for your Instagram, without having to make and waste loads of cakes? Two things, you can either, which is what I do, get cake dummies on eBay or probably Amazon. Uh, basically, it's just polystyrene, they come in different depths. I often stack them up so they're a good height. Decorate them like with a crumb coat as normal and then knock yourself out, do loads of different designs. You can take all your photos and scrape it off and do it again. I do this when it comes to seasonal photos. Uh, you can also buy like fake cupcakes to decorate on top. It's good for practice as well. Um, if not, I sometimes keep a spare cake in the freezer. Um, often if I've done the wrong flavour and I think, oh shit, not got that flavour this week, wrap it up, put it in the freezer. I then keep it there for if I need to take those photos um, or want to try something new, I whip it out, do it. Sometimes I do it when it's like family's birthday and I want to give it a go, like kids' birthdays. I'm like, that's why Beck had two cakes this year. Uh, one was fresh, one was in the freezer that I wanted to try a different design on. So stuff like that, you don't have to make it for it to go to waste or think, oh God, I've got a load of cake here, I need to eat. Uh, there is a ways around it. That's what I've always done. I used to even do it when I did fondant stuff did it for uh, wedding cakes, uh, so it makes it lighter. You can use dummy cakes from the bottom when someone wants to eat tears, but they don't actually want to eat three tears. Um, it's a great alternative. Uh, I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching. As you can imagine, I can't go through every question uh, I get asked because otherwise this video would be like two hours long. I am going to try and do this regularly. If you've got questions you want me to answer, Either drop a comment on here or send them to my Instagram. I often do a little Q&A on my Instagram uh, and I'm happy to collate and do another one. I'll also, some of the big questions I will do just solely on their own. Um, but yeah, make sure you subscribe and apologies for the no makeup and the terrible lighting. It's just my face.